Welcome to this week's Cattle Call. I'm Susan Littlefield on the Rural Radio Network. Question for you, what is the market tone and really how tired is this market? A lot of things that we're going to have to look at that has kind of put the ebb and flow that we've seen in this trade. As we do this program on a Wednesday, still waiting for the cash, which has kind of become the norm. But will it be steady at least? We'll get all those details as we welcome into the conversation Brad Coima. He's with Coima, Coima and Varlick out of Sioux Center, Iowa. So let's just talk about the tone of this market. What are you feeling when you look at the way this trade has been as of late? I mean, we saw some good numbers coming out of the south, but waiting in the north. It's a yeah, it's a thanks for having me on, first of all. And it's a it's an interesting lead in. Sometimes I wonder. Um, you know, I've done enough of these types of deals and I've done enough meetings that Sometimes you wonder what, you know, should you just sit down and say, what, what do you think about? What do you look at? What, you know, what, what, what do you think is important to market? And I, I don't have an exclusivity on that at all, but <clears throat> I, I do think that there is, I gotta be careful how I say this, you know, there, there is a certain feel to the market and, and, and there are times when I have no feeling. Okay. And I think uh, an honest analyst would probably share that. A thought. <clears throat> and then there are other times where it seems like, you know, well, hopefully all those years of experience and, you know, been in the trenches and stuff like that, you know, maybe you get some nuance of, <clears throat> the, well, the market, you know, that, that saying I've used on your show before, when you whip the horse, he had better run. <clears throat> I get that a little bit of that vibe, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, with the feeder cattle futures market. Um, corn's making new contract lows. Okay. We haven't been this low since the COVID year. <clears throat> and yet the feeder cattle are just kind of laying here the same price as they were a week ago, a month ago, three months ago, all the way back into early spring, <clears throat> mid-April. Why aren't we getting a little more, you know, punch uh, out of this softer grain market? So <clears throat> I don't know. I don't want to overreact to that, of course, uh, but that's certain on the back of my mind. <clears throat> the other element, of course, that's always a trick with bull markets, Susan, is that you need to keep fuel in the fire, right? <clears throat> and so to me, um, we probably need to show that the cash is at least steady, um, be better yet for higher, but with a discounted structure like we are, you know, probably at least steady would be good enough. Um, and, and the fact that October cattle three days in a row went up to 189 and couldn't pull through it, you know, that seems to be, that's where, okay, there wasn't enough energy in the tank. There wasn't enough courage on the part of the buyers to take it into new highs now. So if that doesn't work, I mean, traders are very pragmatic, but it doesn't work to buy it, they sell it. I, I know that sounds kind of oversimplified, but a lot, most, remember most of these traders don't know the difference between a heifer and a steer. So um, there's that. So where are we at when it comes to the kill cuts and how prominent is everything right now? Draw a line. <clears throat> I don't know. Pick. I guess I'd probably pick, pick I-80. Whatever you distinguish the north as, the north where the numbers are still tight <clears throat> and um, have been for a long time. We've talked about it over and over. Um, don't know where those re where those placement numbers came from on the uh, October November report, but they're not here in the north. And and so the the kill cuts are that's where we are across the north. Um, and there's a couple of them. Dark Friday. There was a, one dark Monday. Uh, the, you know I can go list several of them that are taking a day off here and there, you know, floating holidays, whatever other, you know, there's a, there's a few of those that they can do. Uh, and, and even with the union contract that most of them have, and that's what you do when they'll say their margins are bad, you know, my heart, you know, pounds for them. Um, or that's what you do when there's not enough cattle to go around. Right. Which is, I think really what the situation is across the North. The South is still going great guns, but Last week, we saw that narrowing a little bit. You know, it had been 10 or $12 difference between this, the north and the south. Uh, and now we got that down to about eight. And I'm not sure if we're not going to narrow that up again this week, maybe. So how current is the south then with their numbers? Currentness. <clears throat> so I, there's two things I watch in terms of currentness. And some of it's subjective, but you try to keep these things objective. One would be average weights. Okay. Average weights across the whole country are are that's the girl in the room. They're, they're higher than they should be. Uh, they're, they're higher than one would, one would have expected had they not, you know, had they, uh, 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 if, if we were indeed as current as what it feels like it is. Um, the, the weights last week were down week on week by two pounds. So now we're to the point where we're like 23 over a year ago after being consistently in the 30s over. So some of that might be the weather. Um, the other thing that you watch that's objective is the grade. And the grade has stayed flat. Um, 
you know, if I saw a big uptick in, in choice and prime, I'd say, oh, boy, we're getting more days because you, as your listeners know, days is what creates great. If, if we were getting a big uptick in that, you know, either in the south general specifically or uh, across the whole five area region generally, then I'd be a little more worried, too. I, I still think it's a reflection of we've had great conditions. The, the, the performance of the cattle have been good because of great weather. Um, I don't think. I mean, seriously, somebody's going to fight the market at 198. You know, these calves make a lot of money here. I, I know corn's cheap. I know replacement feeder cattle are high. But gosh, guys, stay current. That's the reason why we're this good. And, I, you know, I'm telling myself that. You know, I mean, it's not, it's the end of July. This, 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 it's not like this is the heart of your, you know, optimum marketplace, you know, where you're going into what, April or whatever. So how that stay current, I think we can keep our leverage. Well, you know, you, you talk about uh, keeping that currency with the market and, and is there fears? I mean, we're, we've, we've known that there hasn't been the cattle. We talked about this in last week's episode. There isn't that cattle to continue to fill the pipeline in some areas. So does that become a market concern? Well, someone's, someone's going to have to go without, I mean, you know, and, or pay more than they want to. Right. I, um, you know, I don't want to talk about plant closing, but that's a long term concern i think of the industry right I, I i don't see that happening today um you know to me as i've said more than once the tight numbers are still in front of us um I, first quarter of next year is where i still kind of hang my hat as as when as assuming that we get some heifer retention this year this fall that should mean that there's less heifers in the mix that should be yes fed cattle slaughter when you're in the first quarter when they would be fat so i um i don't know you know i <clears throat> Sometimes I, I struggle with this. What's too high? Um, mm -hmm. I watch lumber go up four times in value. I watch orange juice double in value. I watch cocoa triple in value. I saw corn go from three to seven fifty. I, I, I don't think it's up to you or me, Susan, on what's too high. Um, and the market will overdo it, just like it'll go too low, like it did in COVID, right? And it'll, then it'll hopefully go too high sometime too. So, I don't know. You know, I, in the here and now, I think the market's struggling a little bit because the Packers trying to slow the kill down. He's going to try to gain some leverage back. We're at a big level. I mean, 198 for cash cattle up here last week is, you know, near historic highs. So, um, let's stay current. I think there's just still a chance that some seasonal weakness here, but it hopefully it doesn't break a lot. And then we can come back here maybe at the end of the fourth quarter and the beginning of the first quarter for something that's even more fun than we've had already. <clears throat> well, we start into a new month and obviously the heat's going to stick around for a little bit. So that'll affect some weights, but just, you know, it's a good thing you mentioned that because I, I, I wouldn't mind just spending a second on that the new month. Right. Uh, so that means it's, it's the first Friday of the month is this Friday. So that's when options expire. First notice day is Monday. Um, and then we start to talk about uh, what the CME doesn't want to talk about very often, and that's convergence. Uh, so you're, you, we should be getting a little closer now to you can start delivery Monday is what I'm trying to say, which, of course, there won't given the basis that, that, that we have. Um, but we should start to see a little more convergence. Now, the futures is going to converge with the lowest common denominator, though the weakest link, which is the southern cash. Uh, last week it was 190. So you're sitting here, I'm looking at August cattle, 187 and a quarter. Still a little bit of a discount, still look a little undervalued. We do have a little ways to go here before we get to the end of August. But next time we do this, we'll be talking a little more about that convergence and the discount, I think, from futures to cash. All right, sounds good. What's the best way for folks to get a hold of you, Brad? Uh, the phone number is 712-722-0023 or kkvtrading.com. Thanks so much. Brad Coyma joining us today. Just a quick reminder, commodity futures and options do involve a substantial risk of loss, not suitable to all investors. And that's this week's Cattle Call on the Rural Radio Network.